I'm so glad that you came hungry for the Word of God. You did come hungry, didn't you? You are in that place that you're hungry for God, and you want to grow in the things of God. I mean, that's what you come to this house for, is to grow up in the things of God and, and know the Word of God and know what the truth of the Word is so that we can make a difference in this world. Amen? Anybody want to make a difference? I want to make a difference. So that's what we come here to this house for, is to grow up and be what God wants us to be. So let's pray and we'll get into the Word. Father in heaven, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that we all have ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say, that we are going to move in that place with you, that, Lord, that you're placing such a strong hunger in our hearts for the things of God, that we're going to desire you above all things, your plans, your purposes, your will. I pray, Father, you open up my mouth, and you speak forth the oracles of God. Jesus, what you would say to the people. We don't want to hear from me. We want to hear from the Holy Ghost. We want to hear from the Lord Jesus, the head of the church, what you have for this hour. For we want to be in that place in you. And Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to talk about the person of the Holy Ghost. One of my favorite subjects is the Holy Ghost, and the book of Acts is still being written today, and we are the people of God that are supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost, making a difference, changing our world around us, and doing the works that the early church did. And sometimes we think that the Holy Ghost that was on Jesus is different than the Holy Ghost that is on us. But I'm here to tell you, it's the same Holy Ghost. Yeah. So it says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 32, and it said, John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, or it dwelled in him. And actually what that means, it put forth a constant influence on Jesus or on a believer. We are to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. We are to be in that place that we yield and that the Holy Spirit dwells and lives in us. That's how Jesus operated on this earth. That's how he moved. That is what caused him to influence, that caused him to walk in the power. It is the same Holy Spirit. And then in Matthew 3.11, let's look at Matthew 3.11. They're not as, they do get the word up there, but they don't get my notes because my notes are like this. They're not typed out nice and neat like Pastor does. I like my book, and I like to write it down. So in Matthew 3.11, this is what, Matthew said that John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That is the Holy Ghost, that is the presence of God that they described as a dove coming down, descending from heaven onto our Lord Jesus Christ, which changed his ministry and changed the move of God of what was going on in that day. So if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, how much more do you and I need the Holy Ghost? Jesus started his ministry with the Holy Ghost and he ended the ministry with the Holy Ghost. When in the book of John, at the end of it, he spent four, chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, talking about the essential, the, necess the necessity of the Holy Spirit, how important the Holy Spirit is to the church this day. Jesus could only do so much. 
He started a movement when the Holy Ghost came and fell upon him. He started a movement. He started moving with the Holy Spirit. He allowed the Holy Spirit to use him in signs and wonders and miracles. He was an influencer. He was a reformationist. He was a, somebody that went in there and was changing the culture. Anybody know today? The culture must be changed. It cannot stay the same. So Jesus was an influencer. He was a reformer. He went in there to change and turn the world around. And so now let's go to the book of Acts, where the church enters in, or where the church comes on the scene, so to say, so that things were made different. So the, the movement that Jesus started could continue. The movement that Jesus started was to be an influence, not just to Jerusalem, not just to Israel, but to the Middle East, into Rome, into all that part of the world, to where we are today, that the Holy Ghost should be influencing culture. Yes. Amen? So, we are carriers of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Did you go to Acts 2? So in Acts 2, we know this. You've been taught that in this church, that very few people operate in the fullness of the Holy Ghost. He's a person. He has ears. He has a voice. He speaks, and he wants to speak to his people. He wants to be in that place that we are hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying because he is saying what the Father says and he wants us to hear him, follow him, and move with him. There is a movement that is going on in the earth today. God is moving and we need to participate with this movement. We need to be in that place that we are moving with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. And you know what? It may be different. It may look different. It was different to the 120 that were in the upper room. They saw, they didn't understand what was about to happen. They didn't understand what a movement was. They weren't using the word movement. They were just trying to figure out why, why Jesus went to heaven? Why they were left here and he went up? Why the kingdom wasn't established the way they, were, they thought it should be? And then he told them to go tarry in the upper room and they didn't know what else to do but go tarry in the upper room. And so we know on the day of Pentecost, verse chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here, this same Holy Ghost that had been on Jesus and some of the disciples had operated in, but not to this degree. So here comes the Holy Ghost with a mighty wind. And what did he do? He sat upon each and every one of them, just like he did with Jesus. Right? Yes. He sat. He came. And they saw it as a fire. John the Baptist saw it as a dove. However you want to describe the Holy Ghost, he is a fire. He's a fire by night. He's a cloud by day. He's whatever we need him to be. And we must learn to move with the Spirit of God. There is a movement that is going on that God wants us to get into the move with him to change our culture. We are to change culture. Right. We are to reform the thinking of men and women today. 
We cannot afford to have them thinking the way that they have been thinking. So the Holy Ghost has come with the fire of God, just like he came to Jesus, and he came to continue a movement, and the book of Acts is still supposed to be written, and it shouldn't have varied and changed like it has. We have a few books that talk about the Holy Ghost. We have... Uh, all the New Testament, which is a lot of it about the Spirit of God, what God is doing, but it's only about 70 years. I mean, this is not chapter 1, the first year, chapter 2, the second year, chapter 3. It's not that way. There's years in here that we know nothing about. But there were people that were filled with the Holy Ghost that were going out and ministering. You know, basically the book of Acts talks about a few people, just a few people. We don't know all the names of all the people that were influenced by the Holy Ghost and changed their communities, changed their nations. We don't know about all of them. We know basically about Peter, the apostles, Paul, Titus, Timothy, just little bits and pieces about their influence, but they had enough influence that changed the world. If they had that much and they're not near, near, near as big as the body of Christ is today, they don't have near what we have today, and yet we are still babies trying to figure out how to get healed, how to be blessed, how to walk in just the, the goodness of God. And he's talking about we, we are in a movement that is moving God out of, uh, moving us out of the natural into the supernatural. And we're like the, the early church trying to figure out how it works. So moving with the Holy Ghost. That was the whole earth, that is the whole earthly ministry of the Holy Spirit is to teach you and I how to move with God. Not accept status quo, not to be ordinary, not to be people without a voice. We are to be people that carry the voice of Jesus on the earth. We are to be the people. He's not looking for another group of people. He's looking for you and I to rise up, not understand we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, that we come together in church, not to play church, but be the church. We come and we gather together the The reason that we go after the presence of God is because we want the presence of God to invade you on Sundays, to invade you on Thursdays, so that you can go out and you will be bold as the early church was bold. That's, That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the person of the Holy Ghost. That's your best friend. He should be your best friend. He should be the first person that you go to and that you rely on, that you get your counsel from, that you get your wisdom from, that you are not seeking after man's wisdom, but you're seeking after the wisdom of God and he will freely give it to you. Amen. Amen. It's exciting to me. And then you go to chapter 3 in Acts. See, demonstration of the Holy Ghost. We've read this, and we've read this. I've ministered this, and very few people will even pray for somebody. Very few people are afraid to lay their hands on somebody because what if they don't get healed? What if they do? You never know unless you step out. They stepped out. We're not, listen, we're not just talking about the apostles. There were 120 in the room of men and women, people, that got baptized, they became effective. The book does not have room to describe everything that happened. We get small glimpses. Let me go back. Let me, before you go to chapter 3, go back to uh, chapter 2 and verse 16. 
Here is Peter rising up. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, the prophecy that a prophet of God hundreds of years, hundreds of years declared for the church. And this is the fulfillment of the word of God. This is the fulfillment of what the prophet said, what Joel had to say. And Peter is repeating it. And it's not just for 2,000 years ago. And it said, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon who? All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Who is that? That's for men and women. Children. It's to take the confusion away if you're a man or if you're a woman. It did not say anything else in here. Men and women. You know, when we were uh, down at that conference in San Antonio, uh, I met this lady. She's a uh, nurse practitioner, and she said something very interesting. She said this man that came in as a woman, and this man that thinks he's a woman came in and said, I want a mammogram and a paps. So this nurse practitioner said, um, now I don't want to say anything, but um, you may have done the surgeries, you may have done this, but we can't do a pap smear. You don't have the right tissues. He was shocked. Or she was shocked. He was shocked. I don't even know what to say. What? I thought when I did this, you can't change the tissues out. And then she had to tell him he couldn't have, she, he, whatever, couldn't have a breast exam because there weren't any tissues there. Do you understand what we're dealing with in this culture today? Because We're not standing up for truth because we're not full of the Holy Ghost. We're not full of the power of God, and we back off because we'll be accused of being, what is the new thing now, white Christians or something? I don't even know what that is. I I have a revelation that I'm white. But I don't understand what white and Christian do together. I may just be dumb. I admit it. But I don't understand it because I'm, I'm looking at Herman here. He's not white. He's not white. <laughs> he's not white. He's not white. He just have the revelation that he's not white. Okay. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh-huh. Okay. But are you a Christian? I am. Oh, are you woke? No, no. (laughs) Just making it, (laughs) just making it clear. So I don't understand how uh, we're separated. I, I don't, I don't get it, because he and I are the same. We're brothers. Amen. Oh, he brother, I sister. Uh This is just way, yeah. We're, it's getting too confusing, isn't it? People are confusing as man, woman, black, white, you know, Christians. Yep. We're in the same flow. We're in the same family. We move together. So I'm not going to be intimidated, and I'm not going to let them, whoever, whoever them is, separate me from my brother. Amen. This is my brother. 
you know? Har- Harmon and I, we're the same age. We hang together. <laughs> Sorry, Patricia. <laughs> Hallelujah. She and Pastor are the same age. Hallelujah. So my point is that the Spirit of God was poured out on all flesh. All flesh. No designation. None whatsoever was there a designation that it was poured out on just the whites. I mean, the Middle East probably didn't have a lot of white. I don't know. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. But I'm here today to tell you that the Holy Ghost fills anyone that wants to be filled. Amen? Amen? Doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And And some, whoever, that try to label and try to separate, I'm telling you, by the Spirit of God, we're coming together as one body. Male and female. We are not trying to exclude anybody, but if you're in the body of Christ, you're going to be male or female. I'll just tell you the truth. And then it says, And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, talking about men and women, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, or they shall declare the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord? God is good, and he's for everybody. God's got good news for you. He's got a plan for you, and it's not to be confused. It's not to be in an ideology that is, how can I say it nicely? I can't. (laughs) It makes absolutely no sense. And we've got to get that ideology out of the church. It cannot be in the church. We're looking for Holy Ghost, the move of God. The Holy Ghost is, going to, is coming in in a greater way, and we've got to move with God. We've got to know what the Holy Ghost is saying, what the book of Acts is saying is being written today, and we've got to move with it. We've got to change a nation. We've got to change a city. We've got to get over our political right and wrong stuff, and get into what is biblical and what is thus saith the Lord. Somebody's got to rise up and believe the Bible above everything. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. And when this this is them being filled, Peter and John filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 2, and a certain man lame from his mother's room was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask on, on alms, and Peter fastening eyes upon him. Here's Peter, he fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. I don't care what somebody comes. They may become wanting healing. They may come wanting money. They may come for some other reason. But by the Holy Ghost, he knows what they need. He knows what to bring to them. And he needs Holy Ghost believers that will rise up to the occasion just like Peter and just like John and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. He said it with the power of the Holy Ghost. And he had enough faith that he reached his hand down to that man and he pulled him up and when he came up his ankles and his legs and his feet he could stand and he began to leap and he began to praise God why because somebody was operating in the power of the Holy Ghost somebody looked beyond what they could see in the natural realm and they looked by the spirit of God to pour out the spirit the goodness of God on this lame man and that's what the world is looking for they're looking for somebody that will bring forth the power of the 
the Holy Ghost to bring in what they really need. Oh, I'm telling you, we don't need to be in agreement with wokeism. We don't need to be in agreement with this culture and the way things are going. We need to be in agreement with the power of the Holy Ghost and look beyond, look beyond where they are. Look beyond when that person comes and says, I was a male and now I'm a female. And you can say by the Holy Ghost, oh, that may be what the enemy has tried to bring to you. But today I bring you the Holy Ghost. I bring you the power of God that'll transform your life and put you back into right order. Hallelujah. That's what the church is designed to do. I'll try to calm down. But that's what it's going to take to move with God. Now I ask, I don't remember who all was here on January 14th when I gave a word to the church. And I think it went over the majority of everybody's head. But I'm going to go back and read it. Because it's what God is doing. He said, you have not seen my greatness yet. And I think, oh, that is so true. Because the church hasn't been ready. But this, but in this, he called it a campaign. In this campaign, you are about to see my greatness. I'm going, yes, Lord. He's trying to get you and I ready to see his greatness. He is looking for people full of the Holy Ghost that will become demonstrators. He said, for I am, pouring my, I am pouring out my greatness to my people. Because the people, we have to get it. Yep. So I'm pouring it out. Would you recognize when the Holy Ghost came? I'm just getting you to think. Sometimes when the presence of God comes in here, just like he did last Sunday, and God supernaturally touched me, you know, and put me back on my feet, supernaturally. Just supernaturally, he did that. As Pastor said earlier, you know, I was sitting there, my stomach was just a mess. And I, I, I said this last week, I said I came that close to saying, Jordan, take me home. But the Holy Ghost came in. I recognize, I recognize the Holy Ghost. I recognize the presence of God. He doesn't have to announce and say, I am the Holy Ghost. No, I recognize. I, I recognize him because I know him. I don't just meet him on Sundays and Thursdays, but I come into his service to meet with him as corporately as we come together so that he can touch us and recharge us. Amen. So he said, so that in this hour, they, who's they? Come on. Who's they? That is so weak. And we're going to do this till we pass. He said, he's going to demonstrate it through who? That's getting better. Can we all do this in unison? How about, it's me. It's me. I, I'm believing God that every one of us are going to get this. So that in this hour, they can demonstrate to the world who I am. For I, I loved what he said. He said, for I have been disguised to the people of the world. Why has he been disguised? Because we look like the world. We have the same problems the world does. Half the church doesn't even know that... Uh, Wokeism isn't in the body. I read some dumb article the other day. I don't know why I read it, but I read it. And the more I read of it, the dumber it got. And it was a, a so-called college profess professor that was um, supposed to be full of this wisdom in theology and knew the Bible and had all these degrees. And she was talking about how Joseph was gay and how he was a transgender gender because he had a coat of many colors. 
I thought, you have to be far-fetched off your rocker to get that. And she's in college, and she's teaching students. Now, Joseph was transgender because he had a coat of many colors. So if you have a coat of many colors, you better go get rid of it. I'm telling you, the craziness of all of this has just gone off the chart. I'm thinking, where is, where is just being sensible at? Where's your sense at? God gave you good sense. Okay. They have seen me in a way that I do not want them to see me. I have been portrayed as an enemy instead of their God. Is that not true today? People think God's the enemy when God's the answer. But in this campaign that I am doing, in that I will show myself strong in, and you will see, oh, you will see the prevailing grace that I have given to my church. We're going to learn how to take hold of the grace of God. For my church in this hour has been hidden and seemed weak and be beggarly. I'm listening to me when I'm talking, and I'm thinking, wow, this, this is not the way I talk. But he said, this is how people see the church. They're weak because we're not full of the Holy Ghost. And we're beggarly. We're just like they are. We're like the world. He said, but in this campaign, in this campaign, you will see my power and glory, for I will demonstrate who I am. Who is he going to demonstrate it through? Me. That's getting better. When the Egyptians thought, because they did not know me, they thought I could not do what I said I could do. People today. They have, they have no idea who God is. The church doesn't even know who God is in a way. No wonder they're not seeing him in power, and they think he can't do anything. You ask people of the world, they don't believe in him, so they don't think he has any power, and they certainly don't think the church has any power. He says, for I will demonstrate who I am. When the Egyptians thought because they did not know me, they thought I could not do what I could, said I could do, but I proved them wrong. He's about to prove the world wrong. Amen. And they sank to the bottom of the sea. But in this campaign, not only will I prove them wrong, I like that, but I will show my demonstration of mercy and grace. And it's going to take the mercy of God and the grace of God on the people of the world. For the world turns to me, and though, for as the world turns to me, and those that are out that are lost, and even those that have made fun of my name, even those that have stood afar off and laughed at me, they will see my mercy extended to them. That's the goodness of God. And even people making fun of God today, laughing at him. He said, I'm going to show them my mercy and grace. So they will see my grace upon their lives, and they will see my demonstrating power and will turn their lives around. Oh, yes, I've told you, this is my campaign. This is what I'm doing in this hour. And oh, so just hold, just hold steady for I am setting things in place. God's moving. Amen. He's waking us up. The church has to wake up first. That's why we're calling this a year of revival. Because the church has to wake up. I believe it's going to be a year of revival into reformation. Because the church has to wake up. The church has to be revived first. church has to be believe that they can move with God. They have to believe that the Holy Ghost is on them to demonstrate. They've got to believe that. They've got to be in that place that they're going to be demonstrators of the Spirit of God and that the Spirit of God is going to move through them. 
So we've got to be revived. So we're having a year of revival. And I'm, I just want to encourage you that in this, when we have these revival meetings, whether a night, three nights, whatever they may be, I encourage you to come. And I, parents, I encourage your children to come. Don't leave them. We're not on, on the nights that we don't have children's service. Don't stay home. They need to be. They need to be in service. You may say, well, you know, they may make noise. Well, what children don't? Um, and we, we can get over it. They need to see the presence of God. Amen. You know, when we were talking to the staff about this, Randy said, I want my children to know the presence of God. I want them. She said, if Ollie has to be carried around and I walk around, I want him in that atmosphere of the presence of God. You know, our kids went through revival services. I mean, they laid on the floor, sometimes under the pew. Sometimes they had coloring books. It didn't matter. What you want is your children to experience God. There's nothing more important than for young people and children to experience God, the presence of God, the glory of God. So they don't grow up and be wacky like some of us were. I can only speak for me. I was wacky for a while. Let's see. Where was I? And I will move as I've said I will move. And my glory, oh my glory that the Israelites saw and the glory that the early church saw is not to compare with my glory. It's not to compare. God is saying the glory that the children of Israel experienced when God moved in such an awesome and mighty way. And he's saying the glory that the early church saw with signs and wonders and miracles in the presence of God. He's saying it's not to be compared with my glory that will fill the whole earth. The earth has never seen anything like we're about to see where the presence of God is concerned when God's people rise up and God's people take their place. For my glory, this time, will touch every crevice. It will touch every part of life. It will leave nothing uncovered. For my earth, yes, I said, my earth will see the demonstration of my glory. For yes, as we sang this morning, great is your glory, but wait till you see what I will do. For my greatness my greatness, yes, my greatness is increasing. Who is this greatness increasing on? It should be increasing on us. It should be increasing in this house. The presence of God. We should come every Sunday with expectancy that we are going to meet God in the house and God is going to meet us and he's going to touch us and he's going to give us the strength. He's going to give us the grace. He's going to give us what we need in this hour to be bold in the Lord and the power of his might to change the culture that we are not those that compromise. We are not those that draw back, but we are those that are pressing in to the things of God and to the signs and wonders and miracles that God has for this hour. And he said, when you read in my word, notice, <coughs> they did not come, get delivered the first day, nor the second day, nor the third day. You know, when the glory of God was moving on the children of Israel, they had to walk through. They had to, they, there wasn't deliverance didn't come the first day. God did great things, but deliverance didn't come the first day. And he said it didn't come the second day. And he said it didn't come the third day. He said, but I worked my miracles. And then he said, I worked my signs and, and in the mist for all to see. He did it for people to see. But it did not bring deliverance the first day or the second day. I w now listen to this. I wanted the people to see and talk and wonder about who I am. What's he saying here? He wants to demonstrate. He wants to move so that people would talk, that people would wonder. Even the church 
would wonder and we'd start talking about what God is doing. We'd be in that place and we'd say, hey, I want more. I'm moving. God, use me. I want to do that. I want to be used in this hour. I'm not going to be one that sits back in the back. I'm going to be here on Sunday mornings and I'm going to hunger because he might use me. This is a move. This is a move of God. The early church moved in it. That's why Peter and John were at the gate beautiful. They were, going to, they were going to prayer. And God, they were so sensitive to the Holy Ghost that when they saw the lame man, they didn't have to think. Huh. They knew. And God wanted to do something. And they didn't have to say, Jesus. No, they knew. Because they were moving with the Holy Ghost. They were moving with God. And so because their faith in the name not in their ability, even though they'd seen signs and wonders, but their faith wasn't in themselves. Amen. This is where we get messed up at because all we see is our little hands and we think, what can that hand do? It's me. Peter and John weren't looking at who they were. They were looking at faith in the name of Jesus and this power that had come upon them. And Jesus had told them, you know, I'm sending the Holy Ghost and it's going to be like you having me. And that was hard at first for them to get. How can that be better than walking with Jesus? And they got a revelation that walking with the Holy Ghost is the same as walking with Jesus. Amen. And so when they came, and they saw that lame man, they didn't even have to hesitate. We think we got to go fast and pray. 25 questions to God. Is this you? Would you want to heal him? Let's call the pastor. No. No. Don't call the pastor. God's calling you. How about that? God's calling. If you're there, God's calling you. God's calling you. He's calling you to change this culture. He's calling the church. So he said, so church, just keep talking about me, praising, and you will see, for the world will see, for I am God and there is no other. I love when God says that. I'm God. That closes it. Yes. I'm God. Yes. Period. Yes. There's not another. For I'm God and there is no other. I'm a great God. This is his description of himself. I'm a great God. I'm a good God. I'm an awesome God. And I'm a demonstrator. Amen. That's where God's taken the church. And we got to catch up. We got to get in that place. You know, people are going to come against you. The world is coming against the church. They're trying to belittle the church, put the church down, shut us up so that we don't have a mouthpiece, so that we're not speaking truth and love, so that we're not going after the changed culture. They're trying to get us in the door, stay in the church, stay in the church, stay in the church. God's saying, get out of the church, get out of the church, get out of the church. And Peter and John, what happened to them? They got set in a hold overnight. What were they doing? They healed by the power and the name of Jesus. And so the religious people came against them and put them in a hole and tried to shut them down. But that's the same spirit working today. Trying to shut the voice of the, of the church down so the church doesn't know the truth. You got the world in the church. 
and people don't know the difference. And so they take Peter and John, bring them out of the hole. They're going to have a talk with them. And in chapter 4, verse 7, it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? By what power and by what name? We need to be bold and declare by what power and what name. Then Peter filled, what was he filled with? The Holy Ghost, the power of God. And said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed, and what is the church being examined of? Because we're standing up for what's right. We're standing in the place. We're not allowing wokeism. I'm telling you, we're not allowing wokeism in this church, and we're going to tell you the truth. You better vote according to the Bible. If we, verse 9 again, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole. Oh, he did not compromise. He did not allow intimidation. He did not allow what they had to say. He, they did not let it get into their ears and take over and back off. They spoke boldly what, what God told them to say. They stood up for the name of Jesus. Is anybody in this hour are going to stand up for the power in the name of Jesus? Amen. Not compromising the name of Jesus. Not compromising who God created you and I to be. Amen. I'm a little fired up this morning. But I want to get something on the inside that shakes you up out of yourself. And we get self out of us. And they were trying to put them in a box. And they were telling them, you can't preach in that name anymore. Boy, this nation has risen up against the name of Jesus. Trying to take God out of everything. God's been out of our schools a long time. We know that. Taking God, taking God off our, our signs. And if you mention God, you're supposed to do it in secret. I'm not secret about the God that saved me and delivered me and turned my life around, came in and set me in the right place. It was God by the Holy Ghost that changed my whole course of life, that took me out of the mess that I was in, took me out of a place I should have never been in, but he delivered me and he set me free. And I'm going to give all the glory and praise to the Almighty God. It was God. It was the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed that I believe that this is the word of God and it's the truth. And no government's going to tell me any different. Verse 17. This is where we are. Well, we'll do 16. Saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them. Because this miracle has been done, what are we going to do? We don't want it to manifest anymore. We don't want to see the power of God. There are people that want to see the power of God. And they said, verse 17, but that it spread no further among the people. What are they saying? We don't want your Jesus to go any further. We don't want the Holy Ghost and the power. Don't let it get to the people. It could change their life. 
It could change their destiny. It could heal their body. But don't let, don't let your voice be heard in this culture today because it's the only way to freedom. It's the only way to liberty. So let's shut it down. That's what the government's trying to do. Shut the voice of the chain of the church down. Shut, shut us down. But somebody's got to rise up. Amen. And not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not be ashamed that we have a voice. And I believe that God is raising up churches across the nation that will have a voice. For thus saith the Lord. For what is right, that the fear of God, you know, the early church walked in the fear of God and the church grew because the church walked in the fear of God. The church today is not walking in the fear of God. We got to walk in the fear of God. So they tried to, they tried to shut it down. You may go to prison. Things may happen. But are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust God? So this is what church is about. Let's just go down and read a few more verses. No, I'll get ahead of myself. And they, verse 18, and they called them and they commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, what would your answer be? They said, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things that we have seen and heard. They ask you to shut your mouth. What would you do? What would you do? Would you say, okay. Or would you say what Peter and James said, Peter and John said, we got to speak in the name of Jesus. We have to obey God. We don't have. Uh, to me, I don't have a choice. I made my choice. 40 years ago. I've already made it. I'm going to speak in the name of Jesus. Consequences or not. You got to make that decision before it happens. The name of Jesus. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. And verse 23 says, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had done unto them. What did they do? Where did they go? To the people of God who knew how to go after God. To the people of God that knew the presence of God. To the people that were hungry for the people that weren't ashamed, to men and women of God that said, we're going to have revival, we're going to have this move of God, and we're not going to compromise. That's who they went to. Why did they go there? To get into the presence of God and to get refilled to go back out. They didn't go there to hide. They didn't go there, you know, thinking, well, we'll just stay in. They'd already done that. And they found out it didn't work. And they decided when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, when they got filled with the power of God, when they got into that place, they said, we know where to go. And we know they'll pray. And we know the presence of God will come in. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, in this day and in this hour, we must have the presence of God. We are not going to live without it. We are not going to be an ordinary church. 
You cannot afford to miss church in this hour. Can't afford it. Because you've got to be filled. And corporately, you don't know what God will do when you come to church. Anybody in this house ever been touched by God in here? Hands all over the place. Because we know where to come in. And we know the love of God is here. And we know the presence of God is here to work in us and to change us. So his glory and his spirit. You know, we don't do, and we had a short praise and worship today, but we don't do praise and worship for 20 minutes just so we can say we sang and do three books and a hymn. Hezer knows that in this house, we're going after God. And if the presence of God starts moving in, he knows to move with it. Amen. He knows to yield. So we move, so we can recognize. Listen, this is to help us recognize the presence of God. See, if you get used to it and understand and you're in that place and the presence of God comes in and you go, oh, that's him. Oh, that's him. He's here. And we're like, what's he going to do? When we're out there, he won't be strange to us. It's because we're going to Recognize him. We need some keys. He's coming in. The presence of God is coming in. He's moving on in. He's coming in. He's moving in. Let's take a few minutes. Let's just take a few minutes. Destiny, come up here. Let's just take a few minutes. And God can touch you right where you're sitting. See, this is, it is, I just said, anybody wants to know, it's 1152. In a legal church, I have eight minutes. I'm just telling you right now, I'm not a legal church. And I recognize when he comes in. I recognize when he begins to move. So let's just close our eyes. If you fall asleep, it's sleep in the presence of God. We're going after you right now. We're going after the presence of God. Let's take a few minutes. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Just get in that place. Because when he walks in the room, he may come and tap you. He may come and sit upon you, bringing that fresh anointing on you. giving you strength for the weak, giving you what you need, giving you, he may be giving you utterance. He can show you, you know, the scripture Jesus said in those chapters in John, he's to show you things to come. do that. He's in the room. Recognize him. Just recognize him as we get into his presence. Hallelujah.
Take it, destiny. Problem solver is here. The problem solver. I mean, somebody in this room has a problem, and he's willing right now to solve it. He's here to give you the answer, you and him. So as we're just in that sweet praise place, let him solve that problem. We love you.
heard the problem solver is here to solve that problem. I saw somebody left her, I don't know what situation you're in, but it's like it was all in knots and you, and you could not figure it out. I mean, it just wasn't being um, to where it was clear and made plain, but I saw like a, you have a tied rope and it's different cords in there all tied up and I just saw it fall straight. So whoever you are that came in and you had a problem that looked utterly impossible, I'm telling you, he's dropped it in you and that thing is just gonna fall right into order. It's just gonna come right into order. And you're gonna know, you're gonna have such a knowing in your heart. Such a knowing. So don't just right now, just let it go. Just let it go. God's big. God's big. He, he knows. He's got that taken care of. And you're going to walk. You're going to walk in the freedom of that. The freedom of that. Hallelujah. The presence of the Holy Ghost. It's the presence. It's the presence of the Holy Ghost. Somebody's coming out of a financial situation. You're a tither. And you're coming out of a financial situation. And it's going to surprise you. Because I'm going to tell you, it's nothing to do with you. How he's going to do it. I'm telling you, some of you are releasing your faith right now. It's just, you're in a great place. But things happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's just begin to thank him right now. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Just take a few more minutes. It won't hurt you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for every answer. We thank you, Lord, for your comfort, your strength right now, your help right now. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Father, you're so good. I pray, Father, that you just baptize us fresh in the Holy Ghost, in fire, changing our course, changing our destinies, putting us in the right place, in all that you have for us. And Father, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor for all that you're doing, all that you're gonna do, that you're baptizing your people fresh with that anointing and they're going to see you in a greater light and we give you praise for it Father and we give you glory for it in Jesus name everybody said Amen let's stand to our feet thank you Destiny whatever his name is and Bob so glad this team loves me when I forget names they love me anyway right, <laughs> right. hallelujah I know everybody's name mm. it's a sweet presence we want to thank you 
I, I, I believe in y'all. I believe you're the most powerful gift God has. And you are people that are going to change. You're going to change things. Because who lives in you? Who's in you? Hallelujah.